were you always like this in the sense no. that you were always interested in reading or like school for me killed the books bro it, they killed books for me because i was i was working i was studying only for an exam and that exam every year there'd be some sort of exam yeah gcse then a level then degree bro I'm sick and tired of studying for exams i didn't really appreciate what i was learning i just had to do it because i had the pressure to get certain grades it's only when alhamdulillah i got those grades i'm not saying don't you know get those grades because you yeah, need yeah. it with this but you're society saying that because, because you had that pressure you you struggle to yeah to, internalize to just enjoy it, it bro mm -hmm. like now i'm i'm actually studying things like at uni you're doing stuff that has been pre prescribed for you after i left uni and all that i'm studying what is useful for me so i can probably learn more in a year that i could in like 10 years at, at school and at uni because but that's only if you know which authors to go for mm. like okay if i'm to look at uk history i'll go for say mark curtis if i'm to go into foreign policy i'd look at noam chomsky john pilger and these guys so again you can get like a large uh, concentration of information to do with you to do with your background to do with your culture to do with your religion mm. and it's more concentrated than studying a abstract course for three years and coming out with maybe like a couple of months that's really useful to you so the books were killed and in fact it was Malcolm X that kind of inspired me to read because mm. when he was in prison he read a lot um, yeah he, he read a lot but he, would, he was finding it very difficult um, so what happened was he started copying out definitions and because he was there kind of with books I mean you only have books and the gym and gym, you know uh, in, in gym in, in sorry, prison sorry, in prison yeah, yeah. and that, that's literally what it is so um, that's that's what he did he started writing down definitions mm. he started you know going to uh, the, the the end of the prison you mm. know where the bars are mm -hmm. when they would close the lights at 10 o'clock he would go and you'd carry on reading because yeah. they put the lights out and that's how they say you know he got the glasses and his vision got got weak and then when he came out bro he wasn't really educated through the traditional system yeah. but he was able to kind of shake the entire system to its core because he knew exactly where to direct his energy mm, and now with deep. what's happening to Muslims bro if today and now this doesn't inspire you to become more practicing bro then I don't know what time will because there came a time I was ignoring all this nah let mm. me not get into politics let me not get into kind of our history and whatnot bro it's it's necessary it's very very important to be balanced and nuanced in terms of your islamic knowledge and in terms of your secular knowledge your secular knowledge as well to to, to have that balanced view yeah and bro i've had to learn that the hard way hmm. and even when you listen to people like nigel farage they're referencing history as well that we can't alienate these people because history teaches us and why is that when people come to us bro there came a time that i was it would affect my iman bro when people said and me switching on the TV, oh Muslims doing this, coming across people in the streets shouting abuse, oh Muslim, Muslim. I didn't know what to say to them. So you felt this like, you couldn't feel proud of your Islam kind of thing? Bro, I was questioning it like, why is it always bloody Muslims? Mm. These bloody Muslims. Like even I started thinking, flipping, why is it always us? Yeah. Because there was a certain narrative that was shunted upon me mm. to force me into jumping into these books and listening to these alternative interviews that made me kind of think, you know what, terrorism in itself is very broad and why is it that only a specific type of terrorism is constantly being shunted upon me? Wow. There's so much and it's only when I started broadening my knowledge, it helped my Iman, it helped my Dawah, it helped me as an individual. So books have played an integral part. Wow. And the thing is, bro, you know, there's many people that we won't be able to sit with, benefit from. Some have passed away, some are living in different parts of the world. With a book, you can sit with them anytime, Dusty. any place. Mm. And you know what, regardless of your the way you look or what you're wearing or time of day, you can sit and you're not going to be lonely. People say, oh brother, I'm lonely, what do I do? Pick up a book, learn. You, loneliness is a blessing, it's called creative solitude. A lot of these people like Einstein and Tesla, they really utilize their creative solitude and that's the time, bro. That's amazing, and man. Even according to Hadith, we're told, you know, make use of your free time before preoccupation. We're all going to become preoccupied at one time or another. Make the most of it, bury yourself in the books, go to YouTube, learn softwares. You can, there's literally series upon series and you can learn softwares and start the Dawah yourself. But again, First, you need that drive.
for me that drive was people attacking me attacking my faith my identity mm. so that's what i saw i found solace in these books wow. especially self help when i was in a really deep a dark place i had to go to these books and really understand how does my mind work why am i thinking like this i had to reprogram the way i thought and it is like i know i've been bumbling for a long time no 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 this is deep stuff bro it's uh it, 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 these sorts of things make you question a lot of things 